This is the video focusing on the two different separation techniques of fractional distillation and simple distillation. What we're looking at here then is the distillation technique. Distillation, which can either be simple or fractional distillation, both have the same purpose of separating two liquids which are mixed together. Here, for example, we have ethanol and water that has been dyed a different colour. Distillation apparatus is made up of a round bottom flask, it can have a fractionating column and then it has a condenser. That condenser has water flowing around the outside which is used to cool down the liquid. And then it has some sort of delivery device which will then collect the liquid at the bottom. This apparatus as a whole is called a still, S-T-I-L-L. -L. The way to separate your two liquids then is based on their boiling point. So what you need to do is find out the lowest boiling point of the liquids that you have. The next thing you do is you heat it up to that lowest temperature which in this case is ethanol. What will then happen is the gas will start to evaporate. As you can see that is what's happening here. So if we follow this through you will see the gas starting to come up and it's gone into the condenser where the water around the outside is cooling it down. This is allowing the liquid, the ethanol, to be collected into my test tube down at the bottom here. So as long as you keep the boiling point below that of the second liquid you will collect all of your first liquid first. This is a process called fractional distillation. As you can see here, we have the two liquids completely separated. Right, so fractional distillation then. How is that different to the simple distillation you just saw? The key thing is, you have a lot more chemicals that are all mixed together. So just the normal techniques makes it a little bit more difficult to get them apart. So what you have to do is use this fractionating column. It gets attached in between the round bottom flask and the condenser. That's the difference between that and your normal distillation setup. And the rest of the process is all based on boiling points. So what will happen is you'll have your mixture of different liquids in here. So let's say you had something that melted, boiled at 50 degrees, something at 100 degrees, something at 150. What would happen is as you are heating the liquids, this fractionating column would also start to heat up. And to begin with, nothing would be able to get up into the condenser. All of them would hit these little parts in here and then condense back down because the boiling point at the top wouldn't be enough. It wouldn't be up to 50 degrees. So that first chemical would not be able to get there. But as the column heats up and when it gets to 50 degrees that first liquid would be able to get all the way up to the top and pass into the condenser. The water cooling around the outside would then turn it back down into a liquid where it could be collected. This produces a, a temperature gradient so what actually happens then after all of your first one at 50 degrees has been collected the column will then start to heat up again so it'll once it gets up to 100 degrees, your second chemical will be able to come up here and be collected. This will continue, the column will warm up even more, get up to 150, 200 and so on. And by doing that, you can separate all your liquids out based on their boiling points. Okay, let's have a look at an example question then. So we're going to focus on fractional distillation for this bit. And the question is, explain how fractional distillation can be used to separate the following liquids. So we have ether at 35 degrees, ethanol which has a boiling point of 78 degrees, water at 100 and acetic acid at 139. So have a think to yourself and have a go at answering the question. Pause the video now. Okay, if you've watched the video, let's have a look through the answer. The first thing you need to do then is you need to take your solution and you need to put it into a round bottom flask. That's the part that you heat. The second step is to actually heat the solution. So the first two marking points are just for setting up the apparatus and getting the practical ready. The next thing that you need to be aware of is the boiling points. So you've been given those in the question and you know that ether has a boiling point of 35 degrees. That is going to be the first one that is collected. So what you're looking for is something that says that fractionating column, when the top of it reaches 35 degrees, the ether will pass into that condenser. Everything else will not have reached that boiling point, not have reached 78, 100, 139 degrees. So they will start to condense back down, which is your next marking point. So saying that the rest of those liquids will not have got to the boiling point that 
will take them into the condenser. So they will condense, turn back into the liquid before they get there. The final few points are looking at the other three boiling points then. So saying at 78 degrees, ethanol will move into the condenser and be collected. Then when the top of the condenser gets to 100 degrees, the water will move into the condenser. And then at 139, your final one, acetic acid, will be there. Okay, hopefully that's helped you with the fractional distillation part of this topic. The review question, which is compare and contrast simple and fractional distillation, should now be doable. In the answer, you should talk about how fractional distillation is more complex than normal distillation. You should talk about the similarities between the two.